I would like to welcome you today to Marcel van der Studio in Amsterdam. Uh, I think it's, um, uh, it's a very special occasion also for us because we, the studio is kind of closed, but we want to open the doors of our studio in different areas and discuss with you about how we see design, how we see interior design, product design, graphic design, art direction, and how we do things. And so instead of just staying here and speaking to you about it, I want to just make you uh, make your journey with you toward our space and toward our projects. And uh, we are a, a big group of 50 designers, uh, people in the studio from all over the world. So uh, they're very international uh, uh, people, which for us, it's really important because it's important to mix cultures, but also it's important to create a certain uh, family for us, the studio. It's really a big family. They come from all over the world to Amsterdam to work with us, so uh, you will see. Uh, so now I will just bring you to our first space. And before that, I want to share with you a really beautiful tradition that we have, which is very special to us. So please come with, come with us. So we're gonna start from the entrance of the studio. And I would like to share a tradition with you, which is called the family portraits. And it's a beautiful thing we do each year for Marcel. So we, uh, for his birthday each year, we, we do a family portraits from all the studio members. And we based it on the most important project of the year. So this one, for instance, it was for an exhibition of Marcel. And we photographed all the team members uh, really as butterflies and brochure. Uh, and each one has a little name and we, we then print it, of course, and becomes a, a beautiful painting that each year changes because of the project, also because of people. Another one, we're gonna go through the corridors. Another one is this amazing, it's based on the Rijksmuseum, which is a very uh, historical museum in Amsterdam from the golden age, and we did a book for it. So we <laughs> basically dressed up all of us like the golden age, uh, not from the 1600, with the traditional Dutch clothes and as you see, it became also a very beautiful, kind of fun also, you know, we also have fun. A studio and a family needs to work, but also needs to have fun. We're all creative people, so it's great. And then another one, it's this one, it's uh, basically based on Alessi. We did a, a project for Alessi and it's called Alessi Circus. So at a certain point we decided to dress up all like circus mad people and then do a beautiful portrait for this. I think it's a, it's a, the studio is, it's really Marcel in the years together, we created really a, a, a center for people to come to work in a project, to be with us, but also to have fun, to enjoy. Uh, we have a studio boat uh, to just enjoy the canals in Amsterdam. And we bring you now in the main space, in the heart of the studio, which is where we come together for lunch, because lunching together also bounds us. We come together in uh, beautiful settings. We have a pool table where we play. And, and therefore, it's, it's something that for us is extremely important. People uh, and our teams are our, our main assets. So we really try to bound together to take care of them. And now I want to come, come with us. I'll introduce you the first space, which is a material library. And it's a space where we have the workshop, we have a material library where we come up with our products and experiments and pieces and so on. And then today I will, we will start our talk here. So please. So I would love today to, uh, to speak to you about the first part of what we do in the studio is uh, product design and limited edition. So it's a very important part for us. Um, as you see, the first slide is the origin of, of what Marcel has been known from, which is the not a chair. And to that point, uh, it's, a, it's a fun story. I'm Italian. I worked in Milano for 10 years in industrial design. And after those years, I came here and now it's 13 years I'm in Amsterdam. And what is fun is that, of course, I've been studying design in the Italian way of the masters from the 70s, 60s, where design was driven mostly by functionality and, and the, the shapes followed from so by the industry, by the big production. So in a way, when I arrived here, and that's of course not the chair, but if you see the other projects, um, 
Italian design is really driven by, and Italian schools of design is really driven by uh, the industry, functionality, mass production. And when I came here, it was fun to see that uh, that Dutch design uh, is much more near to art. So if I see design to me, there is Italian is very near to industry and the Dutch design is very near to art. So when I arrived and you will see other projects be besides the not the chair, when I arrived, I was convinced that design had to follow really strict boundaries of production, of reproduction, of you know technique, technology, molds, and so on. And then I arrived in the world of Marcel Wanders, which, as you see here with the crochet chair, were all pieces made by really by hand, crafted. And this, you see, the project you see are very limited edition. So it was for me, um, uh, you know, opening mind because for me. I realized how important both sides in design are, how important it is to create design for people. So to reach as much people you, you can, but also to inspire people to not just follow function, but also follow poetry. And the way we do projects in this way is more, is more in that realm. So I think that both, both sides are extremely important and valuable in the world of design. And I was really happy to, uh to to have this path for this last 13 14 years and most marcel also uh, it worked really well so besides of course uh the starting point of the limited edition and more crafted pieces that you see uh, we also do a lot of very different type of product design so product design what i love most in our job is the variety is that we work today with uh, airline companies, cosmetic companies, furniture, lighting. I mean, every client is a different world, is a different planet. And it's amazing because variety, of course, um, it's, a, it's, it's an enormous richness. So uh, I will go through a few clients in products. One is the first is Moy, which is a company that Marcel founded also uh, almost 20 years ago. And it's a lifestyle design company. We do with them furniture like this crazy sofa that stands. Uh, we do special pieces like this rocking horse or a huge clock. But mostly we really do a very similar, is, is, a, is a company, a side of Marcel Wanders. But of course we share a bit of the same DNA. We do surprising pieces, we do poetic pieces, we do pieces and sets as you see here. that really inspires people but surprise them or using contrast we, we managed to to create this uh, this beautiful pieces you see here, and um, and Moy Moy was the origin of Moy. Here you see some advertisement. The origin of Moy Moy was born because Marcel decided that at certain point he wanted to also create project that was never seen the the light of the day. So he created Moy for his project and also for many other designers that also are parts for this collection. So. It's a very, it's our sister company, of course. It's the same of the same, same uh, part. So it's, uh, it's very dear to us. Um, another client I would like to speak to you today is Alessi. I have a long relationship with Alessi since 15, 20 years. And with Marcel, we, uh, I introduced Alessi to, to, to the studio a long time ago, 10 years ago. And, and for us, the clients' relations, clients for us are really like partners. It's very important to bond with your client, to know him, to get to know him, to understand every side of it. Because we, for Alessi, we're working with 15 years, but most clients we work with long term because that's how you succeed in doing a great project when you understand the DNA of your partner and therefore you create amazing projects. As you see, Alessi, we've been through the years, we've been through doing uh, tableware, pots and pans, wood collection, a lot of pieces. and. At a certain point, we didn't really know what to do anymore. So we, we started thinking about a story, a beautiful story that would connect our studio and that could, could, could connect with Alessi. And at a certain point, on this, on this matter, I want to show you and introduce you the slides you see now is the Alessi Circus Collection. And it's, it's an amazing collection because it introduced also a very important topic from our studio which is, um, um, it, it's, it's something that we built for them. It's how we see design and the way we do design is that we are, we're having a very humanistic approach. And when I say humanistic is an approach that is not purely functional, but really 
tries to reach the soul and the heart of people more than their minds. We don't want to explain to their minds, we want to touch their heart. And therefore, we picked the circus idea as an idea, as a general beautiful memory, that it's a memory that belongs to all of us, to my grandmother, as much as to a little kid today. And so it's such a beautiful theme in order to convey uh, in design to bring back such memories in a design world where today function is took over a bit too much and we want to go back to the poetry of speaking to the souls and the hearts of people. And the circus is amazing. Also, it gives a lot of opportunity in colors, in, in, in expression, and mostly also in characters. So you see the collection has a lot of boxes and pieces, but then has five very special characters. The strongman, as you see here. And of course, what you see is also a bit of our direction that we do, and we did the photography in the studio, but you see, it's a strongman that is a nutcracker. But it's, it's a beautiful piece. It's just a limited edition piece. I don't have it here, but uh, they, they, it's items which are very, it's their limited edition. They're very sculptural. They're very expressive. They're, they're something that you can, you know, fall in love with. It's something that you, you just love beyond its, its your function. And for instance, the next one, it's a, it's a ballerina. <laughs> and ballerina, imagine, we brought to the world of design today, we brought a ballerina, which is a carillon. It's a carillon, that is something that maybe today, everybody forgot about it, and everybody don't need maybe a carillon, but it's something so beautiful that relates to our past, that relates to, you know, poetry in, in such item. If you give this to a little girl, she will probably save it for the rest of her life and pass it on on generations. So that's a little bit what I mean. We, we try to, you know, speak, speak to do design and to reach the soul of people is to embed those memories and that beauty that can make project lost. So Alessi was very special. This collection was very special for that, for that reason. So if we move, move ahead, uh, another little hint, uh, Louis Vuitton, it's another client I would like to quickly show you. Uh, and I would like to show you in this case, the first slides are the little sketches that we do. So you can see a bit of a process of thinking, which is the first important element, sketching, sketching with the client. So it's something that we also use uh, beautifully in, in the communication later. And with Vuitton, it's a special client because it's a, the Objet Nomad collection. And it's a collection which is uh, very special because of the theme of nomadic, so pieces that can travel, but mostly also because of the amazing craftsmanship that we can reach with Louis Vuitton. We normally work with clients that has a beautiful heritage and Louis Vuitton has an amazing heritage of quality of leather making. And, and with them, we managed to do this amazing collection of leather work, of woodwork, of um, like crystal blowing lamp, for instance, this lamp, it's called Venezia lamp and it refers to those beautiful lanterns of Venice. It's a big piece and it's blown by hand and it has a leather cage around it. So in a way with Vuitton, we managed to work with the more, and this, this set that you see now here, it's, it's a 3D band wood sofa uh, that holds a seat. And this set is amazing because we managed to work with the three most fundamental materials in humankind, which is leather wood and blown glass and these pieces are made in such an extraordinary way which is very very cool for us so moving on i will share a few other projects and then we'll have to move into our space floss it's one of course the most uh, one of the most iconic design lighting company now in the design uh, fields and um, we also there work since many many years uh, with them and it's, of course i want to show you a few projects one as you see here, uh, this one is, is the cocoon technique from Floss, which Castiglioni uh, introduced in the 60s. Uh, we use that technology to bring it back today again, to celebrate it. And it's a very, it's a very, it's a very soft, elastic material, which is sprayed on structures that you don't see anymore. And it creates that, this cocoon feel. So we really, in design also, we celebrate craftsmanship, but also we, celebrate uh, traditions and heritage, and in this case, this technique. Uh, another very important piece in Floss is the Sky Garden. The Sky Garden 
is a, an amazing piece because of its surprising look and feel. It's a plaster, simple, very simple dome, pure, very minimal, so it's very clean in a space. But then as soon as you see it under, you discover an amazing carved classic plaster ceiling, which you would never expect. And the story about this is that Marcel had an amazing ceiling in his, in his house and he had to leave the house. So he thought, I love so much the ceiling. So he thought, you know, I'm going to do a lamp that really brings that beauty forever in, inside. And that's how it became one of the most successful pieces uh, in Floss in, uh, in our contemporary design world, which it was pretty surprising at that time. So uh, I think in a nutshell, this is a little bit of um, uh, the little product and a limited edition part I want to share with you. With some pieces that you see in the camera. Now I will quickly want to go to another space, which is the Delft Blue Room. And the Delft Blue Room is called Delft Blue Room because it's based on Delft and the Delft Blue Ceramic, which is a very traditional technique, uh, Dutch technique from 1600. And I will quickly give you a glimpse of our direction, you know, how we do our direction, and what we mean when we speak about holistic uh, approach in design. So please come. So as you see, this is a beautiful, all this is blue, painted blue. It's a ceramic handmade chandelier. And I will uh, quickly just want to uh, discuss with you about our direction. So beside design, we do a lot of our direction for several clients, for Moi, for a cosmetic company in Japan, for different brands. When we say that, um, when you say that, you know, when you design something, you're halfway, you did half of the job, mostly today, but in general. Because then it's very important today, if you design something, to tell all the, all the story, to bring your story and your message to, to the people, to the clients, to, to our customers. And therefore we do, when we do project, when I say a holistic approach and our direction is that we cover everything. We do the photography, we do the packaging, we do the video animations, we do the text, the copies, we do everything we can. And as you see the Alessi Circus pieces, of course we did all the packaging, but we did also an, am an amazing animation that you can find in YouTube. We think of everything around the project because I think that's really the, the best that we can give. To, to our clients, but also to ourselves and to, and to our people. So uh, we can start a quick presentation, a quick, I want to show you some slides about this, this topic um, of our direction. One, the first one is, is a cool project still related to a company with a really strong heritage, it's Christophe. They used to make silverware, silver pieces, which is a 250 years old company. And of course, to, today to bring that, flavor of silver is a bit difficult so we did this campaign of photography where we showed this beautiful carved cutlery in silver with all the all over pattern really with flowery pattern which is called Jardin d'Eden the garden of Eden and then together with the photographer of this completely tattooed man so we really humanized a bit the project in bringing the beauty of how today well this was already quite some years ago but still how the beauty we relate these two pieces carved in steel and painted on our body and how beautiful these images were. Another, um, another example of our direction is we do a lot of cosmetics also, products like packaging for lipsticks and so on, and powders for a Japanese company, Le Corte. And also in this case, of course, we design all the, the pieces, but we also bring uh, really the beauty advertisement. So we work very closely with our client and we pick all the models, we pick the photographer, we do our direction, complete our direction of the brand, which means not only these advertisements you see, but the creation of perfume, uh, the stores, we do all the interior designs. And, and so it's something that completes, uh, completes really the scope of the things we do. Because again, as I said, I believe that most important thing is really to to give to your client also all the the beauty that you can see in your product in your creativity that just doesn't touch products it touches a lot of other things around it so the last part of uh, of these of these sessions in the devil room is um starbucks we did a, a capsule collection of starbucks you see the pieces here and the pieces were all 
objects that relates to time. So the collection is called Time is an Illusion. So, you know, the, there is a sand clock, there is a bell, which recalls a bit the time, there is a candle, there is a little temper for pressing coffee because time for Starbucks or for coffee is very, very important. The time that you brew your coffee and so on. So all the pieces spoke about time. And beside, again, the, the packaging and everything about the projects, of course, uh, we wanted to do an animation to really express the beauty of the concept. And I would like now to share with you uh, this little animation. If you have troubles to see it, you can find it in YouTube. Uh, and I will see you very soon in another area of the studio to speak about interior design. See you in a second. now bring you to the next space which is the VIP room is our room on the top floor where we have most important meetings with with clients but we have brainstorming conference and so on and I would like to quickly now speak about interior design so please welcome and that's our beautiful view on the canals of Amsterdam uh, with our pieces of course that you see around us so you can have it here. Is it great? Yeah. I hope all, all of you are still on board. We we wanted to do this uh, this great way of, of you know speaking and presentation. I think is a bit more exciting. So uh, wanted to introduce to you the work we do in interior design and. Interior design is, uh, is not what Marcel started with, but it's something that he picked up later in, in, in time. And the difference that we see between product design and interior design is something, the vision is the same, of course the approach is different, but if I always have a comparison metaphor, for me, design is like if you play a violin. So if you really play a violin, one instrument, you need to know everything about that instrument. You have to be really, knowing each detail of the tones of the, of the instrument and that's product design when you do interior design you need to be more a director of an orchestra you need to put together all the instruments and all the people and the the, the melody needs to come together so the you have to organize uh, you, you cannot know all instruments you just have to know them a little bit and you have to be able to put them together for creating a whole uh, a whole kind of uh, melody and that everything is coherent. So that's a bit the difference between product and interior design. And um, sorry for that, we have the camera uh, setting. And uh, so basically that's how we see the thing. And when we do interior design for us, it's very important. We say, we tend to say that we don't do interior design, we create a destination. And that means that we, when we say we create a destination is because, you know, product design has have legs. We sell products all over the world, but a hotel doesn't have legs. A hotel is in one place. So for us, when we say we create a destination, for us means that each hotel is really expressing the, 
the in the design and in the approaches in the journey the the elements that are uh, very uh, belonging to that place so each hotel reflects the culture the heritage the symbolism the story of the place where it stands and that's how we create a destination we want to give to people uh, to give journeys to people which they can really breathe and feel uh, the place that they are been traveling to. So I will share today a few projects of interior design. Um, we can start the slides and uh, we want to start with one of the hotel which were the most uh, like most important at the beginning of the studio uh, of Marcel's career's interior design is the Mondrian South Beach is in Miami and uh, and of course, it's, it was one of the most impactful uh, at that time in Miami, a hotel in Miami and for us for the studio. And of course, the Mondrian brand is a brand that was really about, of course, it's South Beach. So, of course, it's really like a bit on the, on the kind of interior. Um, um, sorry, is it, is it fine? It's, um, it's a hotel that it's a brand that stands more for a kind of party vibe and it's in South Beach so it's very very pure very white and as you see in this hotel we play with a, a very honeric approach we have amazing bells in the entrance we have sculpted columns we have beautiful white environments and really uplifting fresh environments we've had sculptural staircase that just black uh, comes down in this beautiful white space and, and fresh space and so everything is scaled up. Is we do interiors to surprise people. We do interiors to excite them. We create destination where people can be constantly triggered by by this kind of oniric spirit and placing. This is, for instance, the outdoor the outdoor space in the Bay of Miami. So we brought an indoor, very classic approach. We brought it outside into external in the outdoor space. So it's. It's something that, uh, that, that, that's why each project is very different because each project speaks about the culture, about the vibe, about, the, about how you want to feel in such a space. So in this case, this you see, this is, a, is a, one of, a little part of a room. So it was very fundamental start for us for, for getting the studio be known in the, in the world of interior design. And in Miami also at that time, at the beginning was 2008 when we started, it was a very, uh, very strong kind of hotel and concept uh, beside the ones that were in the, in the area. So if we uh, move on, I'd like to show you another project, which is the Andas from Amsterdam, our city. Very, very fundamental project for us too, uh, because Marcel also owned the hotel and we design it. So he was both an investor and a businessman and designer. It was a very interesting situation. And this, this project expresses what I really call, um, what, are, what we really do in the studio, uh, that we see at our past. We celebrate the past, we celebrate heritage, we celebrate what people has done before us. Because for us, it's very important today to see the greatness of our past or the greatness of cultures, the greatness of heritage, to bring it back today in order to create the future. You can't create the future without knowing what has been done before and without celebrating the beauty, the craft, the culture, the stories, the poetry, the literature, everything that humankind has done before us is a great, great treasure that we have to celebrate, but we can also, of course, celebrate using it into design. And if you see the, the Andes Hotel, it's rooted in Amsterdam, as I was saying. So we celebrate Dutch culture. We celebrate the golden age and we celebrate through navigation maps because there were great navigators in 1600. We celebrate with Delft Blue because it was a craft on the 1600 done by, by Delft, by the Royal Delft. Uh, company we we bring back the stories of poets and we print them on the wallpaper in the rooms we we it's it's a, it's a it's a great way to design because to design basing on beautiful cultural story is always very uplifting for the interior design uh, projects i will also uh, welcome you of course to think of questions and ask questions in the in the in the talk because it's uh, it would be nice to hear from you what you think or 
uh, we're almost there with the last few projects. So please write questions down there and then I'll be gladly answering to you. So the next project I'll share with you is the uh, uh, Mondrian Doha. And I'd like to share this because we saw the, the Miami Mondrian and after 10 years, we had to do the big sister of the Miami beach. And as you will see, it's of course, it's the Middle East it's in Doha. So it had to be the sister. So we have this kind of very beautiful imaginary tree of lives and it's very pure also and you have the carved columns. But of course there is a lot of reinterpretation and twist into the, into the Middle Eastern uh, lecture key. So of course the big stair became even bigger and goes to the ceiling and goes to the sky. Uh, we have this uh, beautiful uh, rooftop sky pool with an amazing uh, glass dome in colors, which is creating all this beautiful space, referring back, of course, to the, to the abajur lamps made on that material on stained glass. So in a way, we, we brought the concept of Miami into the Middle East in Doha, a much larger project, but in a way also very connected, although very reflecting the, the culture and the spirit of, of, of Middle East and, uh, and, uh, and of Doha. So uh, this, this is the project I want to share with you for, uh, for oh, oh, sorry, we have a few slides more. This is an amazing spa for the women's spa. They have, of course, men and women's spa, it's different. And this is a beautiful mosaic spa. It's all over full of mosaic of Bizatza, which is one of our historical clients. And this is amazing softness, beauty, feminine touch and approach. So each space for us, is a discovery each space for us is something to express uh, to express a different a different story you have to in our hotels each space speaks about his own identity has his own identity so moving on on the presentation the slides um, and the last project I want to share with you of course in interior design we do a lot of hospitality projects so hotels mostly five stars six stars and then we do a uh, residential project uh, for big, big properties of uh, private, but also lately we're doing a lot of apartment towers. And apartment towers is basically, uh, of course we do, it's, it's apartments that are designed and then sold. Uh, what we do is that we design them in different styles so we can give to the owners the possibility to choose uh, to have a eclectic style, a cosmopolitan style, a natural style, like the one you see in the screen. And the, and the tower is serviced because it has all the kind of amenities of a hotel. So it has its own spa, its own gym, its own terraces, the pools. So basically it becomes, in a way, a place where people just doesn't leave anymore, but they just, of course, bring uh, their guests not to their house anymore, but to their own space, to their own kind of hotel too to enjoy the space in different ways. So if you see, this is for instance a spa. It's a pool with a beautiful rain shower and mirrors and inside this block of mirrors, you find some jacuzzis hidden. Uh, on the rooftop, you have a common area for having your guests or I mean friends and you can uh, have dinners on the roof, on the rooftop. And um, further to the presentation, I think, we have sorry i'm just looking to the, to the slides and then of course next to the dining space there is this amazing terrace where you can of course uh, enjoy movies with this kind of transparent uh, transparent screen or you can just enjoy the sunset so that's uh, what i wanted to share with you today um, i think that it's important for me it's very important what i learned in my experience and career, but also mostly what I learned here, is that creativity doesn't stop. Creativity is something that as we try to, to do is something that you can really, is a never ending possibility, has never ending possibility. We, when we do 360 degrees, is something that almost everything is possible if you stand for a very strong vision, if you have a strong, uh, way of thinking you can mostly reach any result you want of course in a certain limit but as, as i told you what i love most in my experience in, in in the netherlands but in the studio is that we are doing so many different projects from books to interior design to architecture to uh, product design limited edition so the variety 
of, of so many works and so many different expertise is something that I love the most in what I do. I hope I could give you a little hint today and inspire you a little bit on how to do things. Um, and, uh, and basically, yes, uh, thank you for following this, this little presentation. I'm glad that I showed you a bit the space where we, uh, that we're, where we, where we were. And I hope you, you are being inspired and you have any questions to ask, ask me. So Gabriele, thank you very, is, very much. This has been great, very insightful, thank you. Gabriele, would you mind showing us a little bit more of this beautiful room that you're sitting in? I know when we were rehearsing earlier, we got to see so much of it and I'd love the students to be able to see how beautiful it is. Oh, of course, I will gladly do so. I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a very antique building. It's an amazing building. We got the building a year ago and it's an old school, by the way, we didn't introduce that. It's an old school that we renewed completely in one year. So you still have really amazing natural we kept open air and then of course we have our wallpapers, our lamps that we designed for different clients. Like for instance, the, the Yaldro lamps, which is a company of porcelain. And these lamps are porcelain leaves that reflects like a flower, we have our book. And then we have an amazing Moy wallpaper, which is called the, it's part of the collection of the extinct animals. So I think that's uh, in a nutshell, the, one of the main spaces. Uh, and there, I think that's, yeah, that's in a way, I think you see something there. And uh, if you like to see more spaces, just let me know, but I can't hear you. Great, yeah, can you tell me a little bit more about the studio? How big is it? How many employees do you have? Uh, you know, what kind of different we, roles do people have? Yeah, we are uh, around 50, 50 people, um, more, more or less, 40, 35, 40 are creative. We have three departments, product design, interior design, and graphic design. Graphic design does all the wallpapers, carpets, projects, but they also support the interior design and the product design projects. And, um, and the other are more operational. It's in the center of Amsterdam, in this beautiful old school that we just made our home. And, uh, and it's, it's great because also, again, as said, um, our, our creative team is a very international, I don't know how many, how many internationality we, say, we have, but it's beautiful because it also brings uh, a different kind of, of twist in the way people see things and their cultural backgrounds, how they really embrace uh, different, the project we do and the thinking we, we do in the studio. There is a lot of Italians, unfortunately I'm Italian, so I, you know, we have kind of seven, eight Italians, so I had to stop, uh, stop getting Italians on board. But we also have a lot of Italian co uh, companies, so that was really good to have these cultural connections to the Italians, uh, to the Italian companies and the studio. Absolutely, makes sense. How is the work divided up between the designers? Do some designers work in several sectors of the company? Well, we have mostly uh, product design. The, the, we have the team that works in all the furniture, lighting, and uh, products and so on. Graphic designers work with supporting them in products. So if we have an amazing chair with a pattern, then product design would work with, with, with graphic designers. Graphic designers, they also have their own client as wallpaper and carpets. And interior design, of course, is the ultimate combination of all the expertise because interior design brings all the expertises together in a beautiful way. So when we do interior design, we have larger teams that comes together and brings their really knowledge to the project. So we have product designers that does all the furniture and bespoke furniture, graphic designers that work with our uh, patterns and wallpapers and carved walls. And of course, then the interior designers that would lead the process and project uh, uh, of course, it's also interior design, which sometimes is also architecture and not just interior design, but it's, it's bigger, sometimes a bigger, bigger scope. So we also have some architects in the house. Great. How does the studio work together with your clients to, you know, to pick the stories that you want to tell? Well, you know, it's a very important, it's a good question for us. As I was mentioning before, the clients is like our partner. If you want to succeed in design and, and you want your project to succeed, you, we're not artists, we're designers, which means that we have to work with a company 
And it's like, it's like when you have a kid and you have the mom and the dad and the project, which is the kid needs to have both DNAs. So you need really to embrace your client and to make sure that he recognizes himself and his DNA and his company in the project as much as we have to. And that's how I think when a, a project is really successful is that you can say and you can tell, oh, that's a Marshall Wonders piece, but it's, it's also an elastic piece. For instance, in the circus example I showed before, is something that really hits really well on who we are in the studio and who is Alessi and bringing their DNA inside the project. So basically that's, that's very important. So that's how we work. We don't go to a client and we want to do this. And it's always a very, very close collaboration. Nice. Can you walk us through a little bit more the process in regards to interiors? Describe what that process is like for the team from concept through full scale environments and implementing that. Yeah, so interior design is, uh, is something that's, it's, it's, uh, it works in a way that, of course, you have the interior design, which is a little part of your process and project. You have an operator, which is basically who's going to run the hotel. So they have a lot to say and they have their own style book bibles and so on so you need to really work with them and then you have the investor which is the one that put, puts a building in so that's the trio where you work with first but when you start the project of course for us the most important part is to understand the brand so the operator so what are the what are the ways they want to work what is their their journey experience or on food and beverage how how their brand needs to be expressed in design. And the second part is, as I mentioned before, to see where is the hotel. If it's in Amsterdam, we want the hotel to speak about Amsterdam culture. If it's in Tokyo or if it's in another place, we want not just to give people a place to sleep, we want to give people a place to dream, to be excited, to be surprised, to learn stories about the place they're, they're being coming. So that's, a, that's the way we see. So we do a lot of research on the place. We go and research history books about the place. We see the symbolism, we see the painters, we see everything that relates to the place. And of course, then we start the normal process, which is brainstorming with the team, starting connecting, uh, seeing all the spaces because each space will have his own little story. So the, the lobby, the, main, the room, which is very important because that's what also guides all the, the main rooms in the hotel. And, and then we start the concept design phase. Uh, after the concept design, which is very much done by sketches and mood boards, first floor plans and so on, we go to schematic design, which is uh, the phase which you really detail a bit more. You explain the ff &E and all the furniture and all the, the providers that are going to be in the project. And then the last phase is the most, uh, it's a DD, the kind of developed drawings, infrastructure drawings, where we, uh, we really then it's very engineered it's really like the drawings that will be used for construction with your providers and suppliers that will build the hotel so in a way that's how in a nutshell works our process great thank you marcel wonder studio has so many different types of clients that you work with amazing clients what is the process to focus on the essence of each of those clients yet offering differentiation Sorry, I, can you repeat the last part, the question? I, I missed it. Oh, good. How do you focus on the essence of each client, yet while offering differentiation? Well, that's, that's partially what I was explaining, is that each project is different because each client is different. And each client has his own history, technology, craft, material, uh, anything. So that, that's, that, that's, that's a that's exactly what happens when you have so many different clients is that you work with them in order to create a, a, a project that really reflects their identity. And that's fundamental for us because otherwise we would be artists and doing for everyone the same little sketch and painting, but that's not design. Design is a collaboration. Is design is, is something that, I mean, the, the art, you're a, you're a trumpet player and you're on your own. When you do design, you play in a band. There is a lot of people that you need to work with and play with, an engineer, the marketing guys, you know, so that's, that's the difference. And that's how each project is very different. But we always infuse 
also the way we think on design. We always infuse what I, what I spoke before about embracing the heritage or bringing back memories which belong to everyone into the design world of today or you know infusing what we believe in in our culture in our past and what is is decoration for us mean so all these matters we bring but each time they're a bit different because our partners is different yeah and that that it's part of a larger band really is a, a great analogy Pivoting to talk to more about you specifically, what is your career path in the industry, Bryn? You know, and what does your day-to-day -day look like now? My creative path, how would I become a designer? Yes. Or, well, your career path, how did you get started? Okay, a little nice story I will tell you because it's fun. I mean, I, I, my, as Beth was saying, I grew up all over the world because my parents were diplomats, so in Africa, in South America, in each time for five years, which, of course, when you're a kid, opens up your mind and understanding that there is an infinite amount of cultures and they're very valuable. So, and they also collected items, my parents, like antiques. So in the house, I always was, I always was traveling and the, the walls would change, but not the items, so I got connected in consciously to objects and then before design it's fun because before design because of this antique i loved archaeology i really wanted to be an archaeologist so my parents were was living in syria so i went for six months in syria in the kurdistan in the desert for six months five hours from anything and for six months i digged with this expedition and we digged uh we found thumbs and pieces from 3000 before Christ. So I was digging and at certain point you, uh, we, we found a, a thumb with amazing vases and pieces that we would take out of, of the ground from 3000 before Christ. So and for me, it was an emotion because it was like, wow, look at this craft, these pieces that are 5,000 years old. And I have the chance now to see them and to understand the beauty of who did something before us. And I have the chance to really understand how they would live, how they would paint, how would they would do ceramics. So in a way that brought me to this path. And then I saw that archeology span was a bit of a dead end. So I thought it would be great to design the new archeology. span So to also be able to design pieces that people would love and would carry on from generation to generation. And then maybe sometimes people in the future would, would follow. And then I started designing uh, in Milano. So I started in Milano. I was there for nine years, working in kind of different studio from Mark Sadler. I started working with Alessi, organizing their workshop with external people. And then I really got into understanding the industry because when you study, guys, when you finish studying, that's only the start of your profession. Because the beauty of design is when you go and you see the industry, you see the craft people, you go and understand the processes behind objects. And that's the most beautiful part where you start really growing as a designer. And then at a certain point, 13 years ago, I came to, to, to Marcel Anders, to Amsterdam. And since then it was an amazing growth of constantly learning from different, different expertise. But you know, the, what I also a part of Marcel himself, the people which I learned the most are all the people I could be able to work with, all the engineers, all the brilliant minds behind amazing materials and technologies. And, and each, each client is so different that really uh, being a generalist is beautiful because you learn from all these experts in all these different fields and you can connect dots and, makes, make, connect dots and make beautiful things which are, uh, doesn't exist. That's great. Where do you draw inspiration from? Inspiration is, inspiration is everything around you. Inspiration equals curiosity. I think that inspiration, curiosity is something that brings you inspiration and they're really interconnected. So I think that's a fundamental a skill or, or aspects to you to, to be able to really be creative is to constantly be curious of what is around you. And that's anything. It could be a leaf of, of a tree on the floor. It could be a song or it could be a reflection of the water. It could be someone that you hear. And it's something that if, you're, uh, if your radar and antenna is kind of always open, you connect dots. You make things happening because your, your eyes are open. 
your ears listen, your smell is smelling, your nose is smelling, and everything can come together in making something beautiful. And in your role now, what does your day-to-day look like? Oh, pretty busy. Also, today was not so, well, not so quiet. No, it's, it's, it, the day today is uh, following with Marcel, uh, basically overseeing all the projects from the, all the hotels, uh, product design or our direction. So my day today, unfortunately today is in front of a lot of screens, as you guys probably know, Zoom and connection, because we can't be together for now. Hopefully soon uh, we will, but on, normally then I just, jump from one team to another, uh, work with interiors, work with the products, work with, the, and also there is a lot of traveling because uh, traveling for uh, revising prototypes or you know meeting a client and seeing and understanding that technology fits a new client. So there is a lot of, of this, this, uh, this aspect, but mostly I sketch, I used to do a lot of 3D drawings myself, but nowadays I sketch a lot even when traveling. So I can send sketches to the teams and they can start developing and then they send me back things. So, uh, so that's a little bit my, my daily. And also in this position, you, you don't have a job. You, for me, the, the work and the life is one. It's something that I'm passionate about and it's part of my, it's woven in myself. as So I don't have from nine to six or from Monday to Friday. It's, it's always. I can dream of a some of I can dream of a project. It happened two days ago, by the way. I can dream of a project, or at night, it's always it's always on. It's never off. Right, it's just a part of who you are in your life. Let me ask, what's your favorite part of the design process? Uh, the 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 two two areas are the most interesting to me. One is when the circle closes means that one is when you have an idea and at certain point, the idea makes sense 360 degrees. It makes sense for function, for aesthetics, for material, for production, for distribution, for marketing, for storytelling. And, and, it's, and, it, and that's the most uplifting when you see that an idea covers all of these, it makes, and you're super happy because it makes sense for you, but it makes sense for everyone. That's, and that's really the first, concept moment and idea moment and the the other one is when you see it first time live so you when you really and maybe it's not the first prototype sometimes first prototypes prototypes are a bit uh, tricky but when you finally see the piece and it's and it's there it's physically we we work with the unknown we create things that doesn't exist so it's really for for me it's like creating it's like a lot of babies of your project and when you see it in real and you finally you know, see the result of two years of work. That's, that's pretty special. Yes, I can imagine. So last question for you. Are there any final words or advice you'd like to give the students listening today? Yeah, I would love to, um, to give, not just, I mean, from what I can, from what I can see and think of what my process was, is to be passionate about what you do. And that means also to really be passionate beyond circumstances or difficulties. It's, it's a difficult world, but you know your passion will go through that. And therefore also stand for what you believe in. It's very true. It's very important to stand for your beliefs and stand for really what you, if it's grounded and if, it's, if there is a, a good reason for it, stand for it. Uh, be honest and transparent and mostly be curious. Always be curious, be open-minded to accept, to grow, to learn, to question yourself, to, to really open your eyes always around you and get the best out of what the world and what other people can bring to you. And those are the kind of key, key messages I would like to give to you. And uh, I hope it was inspiring for you to, to, to have this little tour today. And uh, I'm, I'm glad that you've been spending the time with us. Great. That's wonderful advice. And Gabriele, I want to say a huge thank you. This has been truly very special to get this incredible walkthrough and inside look in the studio. And I want to thank all of the students who tuned in today. If you want to learn more about Marcel Wanders Studio, you can visit marcelwanders.com or on Instagram, Marcel Wanders. If you want to learn more about the Original Americas, you can visit theoriginalamericas.com or on Instagram, 
Be Original USA. L lovely. Thank you, Be Original. Thank you, Beth. Thank you, everyone. Thank Love you. from Amsterdam and take care. Be safe. Bye.